Hi everybody, in this video we're going to talk about how much a roof replacement costs. So I'm Tracy Bookman, owner of Homestead Roofing, and here in Colorado it's not a matter of if you're going to need to replace your roof, it's a matter of when you're going to need to replace your roof because the weather here is pretty severe and on average people here in the front range area have to replace their roofs about once every seven years. So the one big consideration that you've got to make right up front is, is your insurance company going to be a part of the re-roof project and payment for the re-roof project? Because the sad reality is there's how much a roof really costs and there's how much an insurance company thinks a roof should cost. Now in this video we're going to talk about what the average roof is going to cost and by average what I mean is just a simple roof. It could be two-story, most likely one story, but it doesn't have a lot of facets on it, not a lot of uh, features and in size it's usually somewhere between 2,000 square feet and probably 2,400 square feet. That's pretty much an average size roof here in Colorado Springs. Putting a new roof on your house is kind of like buying a car. So when you go to the dealership to buy a car they're always going to ask you what kind of options that you want on it. Well uh, a roof is kind of like that although it's not really options that you're looking at. There are a lot of other factors that control the cost of your roof. So if someone were to just simply ask me, hey, how much does it cost to put a new roof on? The answer to that is really just two words, it depends. But if your insurance is going to be part of the re-roof project, then the only costs that you need to consider are going to be number one, your deductible by law. Uh, it is the homeowner's responsibility to pay his deductible here in Colorado. Number two, any upgrades that you want to do. So if you want to uh, put on fancier shingles or upgrade the underlayment or anything like that, that's a cost that you would have to bear. Your insurance company is going to pay for that. And then any homeowner maintenance issues. For example, like if uh, the decking underneath the shingles is rotted and some boards need to be replaced, that's going to have to be part of the homeowner's responsibility to pay, not your insurance companies. Now, whether you are paying for your roof out of pocket or whether your insurance company is paying for it, here are some things that will affect the cost of the re-roof project and it's going to make that go either higher or lower, kind of depending on your individual home. First of all, is what is the elevation of your home. So here in the Colorado Springs area in El Paso County, if your home is 7,000 feet or over in elevation, then code requires that you put a product called ice and water shield at all of your eaves. And your eaves are where your gutters normally are. Now ice and water shield is really kind of an expensive product and so that has a big effect on the total cost of a re-roof. If you happen to live in Elbert County, where we work also, uh, Elbert County requires ice and water shield on every home regardless of the elevation. And if you live in Teller County, Teller County requires ice and water shield at all the eaves and also in the valleys, but the amount of ice and water shield that they require is twice as much. Another thing that affects the cost of your new roof is, is your roof more than one story and or is it steep? So if your roof has an eave which is over 17 feet from the ground, that's considered a second story. And it's high roof charges apply to that because the labor is more expensive on a high roof and your insurance company knows that and usually they'll put that in their claim. But if your roofing contractor is building an estimate, he is going to include high roof charges if there's any eaves that are higher than 17 feet. Also, if your roof is steep, that increases the labor charges as well. And by steep, what we mean is a pitch that's greater than six over 12. So the higher your roof is, and the steeper your roof is, that's going to increase the cost. Another thing that affects the price of the roof is, is your roof a simple roof 
or is it complex? So a roof like this one is fairly complex and it increases the amount of labor. It takes them longer to install the roof on it. Lots of cuts that need to be made that ordinarily aren't going to be made. But the other thing that affects the price of a re-roof on a very complex roof like this one is the fact that there's a lot of valleys and we have to buy valley material for that. And there are a lot of ridges and hips and those products cost more than regular shingles. So if your roof is a simple one, then the cost could go down from the average. If your roof is a complex one, the cost is probably gonna go up from average. This next one probably seems fairly obvious, but is your roof huge or is it tiny? So even if your roof isn't complex, but it's very, very large, then of course that's gonna increase the cost from the average roof. And conversely, if your roof is really tiny, then that's gonna decrease the cost from the average roof. And like I said, an average roof is probably anywhere between 2,000 square feet and 2,400 square feet. However, don't uh, confuse the square footage of your house with the square footage of your roof. One other thing that uh, will have a pretty dramatic effect on the price of a re-roof is homeowner maintenance things like a new roof deck. So the roof deck is the wood uh, on top of your rafters or on top of your trusses that the underlayment and the shingles get nailed to. So if after your roofer tears off all the roofing materials and finds out that you've got rotted wood in there because of water intrusion or maybe some of the wood is just too thin and it's gotten cracked or broken because of people walking on it, then uh, those boards are going to have to be replaced. Now if you live in an older home and you don't have solid decking but you have slat decking which has gaps in between each boards because they're using like one by sixes or one by eights or one by tens that's got to be entirely redecked so the whole house would need to have a new uh, roof deck put on it and usually we're just using 7 16 osb that's normally what gets used to put on a new deck on a house now if your insurance company is paying for the re-roof that's something that they may cover as part of the cost of your claim. But that's something that you're gonna to have to ask your insurance company about before you proceed with the re-roof because every insurance company has different policies about whether or not they're gonna pay for that kind of thing. Installing a new roof deck on a whole house is very expensive and it has a dramatic effect on the cost of the re-roof. So one other major thing that there is that affects the cost of the re-roof project is how accessible is your house. When materials are delivered, ordinarily the, the shingle supplier will put those up on your roof and they do that either with a conveyor or with a boom arm and just from the truck parked in the street or parked close to your driveway, they'll just bring those right up on top of the roof. If they can't do that, because of access problems, then they have to put all that material on the ground by the house. Then our guys have to hand load that one bundle at a time. That increases the labor charge. Similarly, if our crew can't get their dump trailer close to your house, so that way they can just throw the materials off of the roof into the dump trailer, then they have to throw all of the waste material onto the ground and hand carry that to their dump trailer, whether that's parked in your driveway or parked in the street. So again, that takes a lot longer to do all that stuff, and so the labor costs go up, uh, sometimes fairly dramatically, depending on how large your roof is. Another thing to consider that's not necessary, but some people want to do that, is whether or not they want to make any upgrades to their roof. So for instance, if they want to put ice and water shield on the roof, even if it's not required, upgrade from just a standard felt paper to a synthetic underlayment or um, moving to an upgraded shingle. For instance, if somebody has a standard laminate shingle but they want to put on an impact resistant shingle, then of course that's going to raise the price as well. And remember, upgrades aren't something that your insurance company is ever going to pay for. That's always going to be an out-of-pocket expense for you as the homeowner. Now here's a super important thing for you to take into consideration. Of course you should be talking to multiple roofing contractors but don't make your decision based on the price. For one reason, if your insurance company is paying for the re-roof, 
then your insurance company pays the cost of the re-roof and your cost is the deductible. So almost regardless of where your roofing contractor's price is coming in, your out-of-pocket expense is still only your deductible. So you definitely don't want to make your decision based on price if your insurance company is involved. But if your insurance company isn't involved, then you still don't really want to make your decision based on price alone. Because if you get three estimates from three different roofing contractors, the question you want to ask yourself is, are you educated enough about the roofing process, roofing materials, and labor costs to know if those three estimates are really apples to apples? So what I would really recommend that you do is educate yourself about the process. Make sure that you understand everything and if there are differences in those estimates, ask the roofing contractors about it. Choose the one that uh, you feel most comfortable with, the one that you trust the most, the one that you think has the most credibility, and then ask him why there's such a difference between the different estimates. Especially if there's a big price difference, then something's not quite right. Now the point of this video wasn't just to talk about all the different things that could raise or lower the cost of a roof. The point of this video was to actually tell you what an average roof is going to cost. So let's talk about the different areas of Colorado Springs just really quick. We've broken it out into three different areas of Colorado Springs and then two areas outside of Colorado Springs. So if your house is in the central part or the south part or the east part of Colorado Springs, you can realistically expect that an average cost to replace your roof is going to be between $8,000 and probably about $9,500, $9,600. If you happen to live on the southwest or the west side of town, then the cost is going to be a little bit higher because a lot of those houses are bigger, more expensive, and in certain areas a lot of those houses are a lot older and so you may run into issues with having to redeck the house. An average cost to redo a roof in that part of town starts probably around $10,000 and could go up to as high as even $15,000. And again, some of that is due to uh, the more expensive homes in that area and some of those have upgraded roofs already. If you happen to live in the north part of town, Briargate area, Glen Eagle, uh, those kind of areas, then the price there is going to be about $9,000 to about $12,000. As you go further north, you get into the areas like Flying Horse, King's Deer, Monument. Uh, the price there is going to go up even a little bit more, probably be more equivalent to the prices that you would expect down in the southwest part of town. So that's the bottom line on how much a roof replacement costs and that's specific here to the Colorado Springs area. It's going to be different in other parts of the country, different especially up in Denver. But if you have specific questions or you'd like us to come out and check out your roof and give you an estimate, then just give us a call right up here at our office phone number 719-433-6991. You can also visit our website and that's right down here at homesteadroofingcolorado.com. We've got a ton of information out there, lots of educational videos and articles. If you like this video and it's been helpful for you, we'd love to hear about it. Please give us a big thumbs up and leave us a comment in the comment section down below. And also do us a favor, please subscribe to our channel and click that bell icon so that way you get notified when we've got new videos. Until our next video, I'm Tracy Bookman, owner of Homestead Roofing.